CataractCoach.com. This is how it started, and this is how it's going. There's so much to be learned from this case. And our guest surgeon is Dr. Utku Limon from Istanbul. Now you can see there are already pars plana ports that are placed, so you know you're going to do a vitrectomy. Patient has bad diabetes, proliferative disease, and needs to have the tractional retinal changes in the macula fixed. So the patient's going to have a full vitrectomy. Now, the doctor knew ahead of time that someone else had done an intravitreal injection for this patient, and the issue is they inadvertently punctured the lens capsule. The posterior capsule was violated during an intravitreal injection, so watch what happens. Going in, trying to do a phaco chop technique, and the infusion pressure just pushes the nucleus down. It's hard to chop it, and now the posterior capsule is going to open up even more, and this, you can already tell, there's the nucleus already gone. Nucleus has already fallen in the vitreous cavity, and again, it was to be expected. These cases are becoming more and more common, where an intravitreal injection inadvertently damages the lens capsule, and this is what can result. And we've shown multiple videos of this here. Now, fortunately, this patient's already going to have a pars plana vitrectomy for the proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So there's the infusion port being placed, and let's talk about how we should do this technique. So first thing is, you want to clean up any prolapse vitreous. So you see the vitreous cutter going inside that port and cleaning up prolapse vitreous. You don't want any vitreous in the anterior segment. Of course, the patient's going to have a full total vitrectomy performed. But at this point, you really want that lens cortex out because it's going to impede your view. So what you can do is you can go inside here and use that vitrector on um, aspirate mode and clean out all the lens cortex. So again, here... The position on foot pedal one would be irrigation, two is aspiration, three is the cutter. That's for removing cortex. If you're removing vitreous, position one on the pedal should be infusion, position two is the vitreous cutter, and number three position on the foot pedal is the aspiration. So triamcinone being used to really stain and make sure we can get all the vitreous out of the anterior segment. You don't want any of it left there. And that's being cleaned up quite nicely. And then the Suction can be used to remove the remaining lens cortex. Again, very important you clean up all the cortex. You see there are five iris hooks placed also. The patient has a small pupil, five iris hooks, and she gives a very nice exposure here and keeps things away from that main phaco incision. So here's the last of the cleanup of the cortex, and that looks really good. And then now the view is going to be much, much better little bit of cortex left now so going in with again through the paracentesis and just cleaning that up it's only one hand because of course remember there's an infusion port already in the eye and there's that last bit in the sub incisional space now the view for the vitrectomy is going to be much better so good move in removing that cortex first a little bit more anterior vitrectomy there making sure the anterior segment is completely devoid of any prolapse vitreous. You can see there's that reflection, or you can see the, the shadow of the big nucleus down on the macula, and we're gonna show you the pars plane of vitrectomy also. Now, I'm not a vitro-retinal surgeon, and I don't perform these types of pars plane of vitrectomy cases. I refer these out to colleagues who perform them all the time. So there we can put on our viewing system, and there's the nucleus falling right there onto the retina, and that can be, of course, are removed, but first taking out all the vitreous. So freeing the uh, attachments from the vitreous and that nucleus will be removed. Full vitrectomy will be done as well. And you can look around and see there's a lot of scarring from prior panretinal photocoagulation diabetic laser that was done. And so this patient is very fortunate to be in Dr. Limon's hands. The patient's gonna have a real nice outcome here. So in our setting, in our private clinics, so surgeons like me do primarily just cataract and refractive surgery. We don't do any posterior segment or vitreous surgery, retina surgery. We send those out to colleagues who specialize in just that. So if we have a combination case, sometimes I'll work together with a retinal colleague, or we'll do it staged or sequentially. And so now there's that lens nucleus, again, taking off the vitreous first. This is really a beautiful technique here. And... If you are inclined to want to do these types of tough cases, I encourage you to do a vitro retinal fellowship. One of my favorite surgeons to watch is Dr. Lukan Mishev, and he does beautiful surgeries. He has a YouTube channel where he live streams all his surgeries, and he does both posterior segment and anterior segment surgery. He does everything, and that's just amazing. 
There are some times when I get unusual cases that I wish I had done a retina fellowship, but I don't want to actually specialize in that. I actually am much happier doing uh, cataract and refractive surgery. I don't want to routinely do uh, retina surgery or vitreous surgery. So there's the nucleus that's nicely brought up, and that's going to be removed. And now, obviously, the nucleus has an, a significant density here. How are you going to remove it? You can try here with the FACO probe. If you're holding it up into a reasonable position, that may be okay. You can use a FACO phragmatome through the posterior segment to debulk it. Very hard to remove this with a vitreous cutter. But so this surgeon is going to do a beautiful job. Remember, all the vitreous has been removed here. So there's no vitreous entanglement of the nucleus. He's just using the FACO probe, keeping the nucleus up in the anterior segment there. And that looks great. Now, any small pieces of the lens that have fallen back will be cleaned up during the rest of the posterior segment surgery. So beautiful capsorexis here. Of course, that's important because you need to get a lens here in the sulcus. Hopefully you'll get a sulcus lens with optic capture behind that rexus. That looks great. So there is a little bit more of the lens material. So just using the vitreous cutter here, looks like mostly an epinuclear shell and that can be removed pretty easily. Again, key here is to take your time and be patient. Certainly, I'm no expert at posterior segment surgery. It's not a part of my practice. And you see the video has been sped up to four times normal speed. I wanted to show you the whole video because I think there's a lot to be learned here. Now, we really need to exercise caution when we're doing these intravitreal injections. So doing these intravitreal injections in fake patients is, of course, higher risk. Now, there are a couple of videos in Cataract Coach that show this. There's a video that we have from like two years ago where the nucleus does drop and you see that happen. You can see ahead of time, the patient had a track mark of the needle in the lens. You look at the pre-op area, look at the red reflex and you would see that. And there's another case we have by Steve Saffron on our site, who's a fantastic surgeon for complicated cases. And he shows how he's able to do it through the anterior segment without having any of the cataract fall back. And again, it depends on the degree of damage. If it was a small puncture site that then fibrosed over, that may be strong enough to do it uh, from the anterior chamber, anterior segment, do routine cataract surgery like Dr. Safford did. If it's a case like this where it was extensive posterior capsule damage, you pretty much have to do this technique. Now, if you're a private practice doctor in uh, the U.S. where you don't routinely do this type of surgery, what would you do? Well, probably the easiest is to have the patient see your retina colleague who can then uh, um, decide to do the case with you and you can do it combined. Or the retina colleague can simply do like this, take out the cataract through the pars plana, remove everything, treat um, the underlying conditions, and send the patient back to aphakic. And once the patient's aphakic, then you can go ahead and put in the sulcus lens again, or you could just have your retina colleague do it. So now here we go, we're looking at the posterior segment. This is now removing some of the tractional changes there. You can see some fibrotic changes there along the arcades. And this patient will go on to have a beautiful retina surgery, which we won't show you because it's beyond the scope of what we do here on Cataract Coach. But thank you for the video, Dr. Limon. I really enjoyed watching it.